Hey folks, this is Ben Gessel. How's it going? Um, I wanted to make this video about End of the Dragon, but I wanted to do this in a way that uh, touch on this movie in maybe a way that hasn't uh, really, not too many people have really uh, talked about uh, this movie. Um, uh, yeah, just to rephrase it, I want to talk about a lot of things that uh, about this movie that um, maybe aren't always addressed so much. So I'm very fascinated by archetypes in um, in literature and movies, fantasy, as well as uh, you know anything subconscious like symbols and dreams that keep coming back and things that have meaning, but are are kind of often fairly universal in their meaning from culture to culture, from person to person, uh, kind of thing, and. Um, and some of these things that are in Enter the Dragon. I'm not going to be talking so much about martial arts. Not so much. This is, of course, one of the main things you talk about with Enter the Dragon. Now, it's going to be some of the other stuff. More of that other stuff. So I'm going to kind of go through this in terms of, uh, bit by bit, what, what, what happens in the movie. But I'm going to try not to say too much of anything that gives away the movie, as far as the main plot. So if you guys haven't seen it... Um, It'll still be okay for you to watch this, and maybe what you want to see the movie after watching this, um, and look for those kind of arch archetypes or those kind of spots where maybe there um, there are some very iconic moments or things that kind of stick in your subconscious kind of thing. So you know, of course, the movie starts out with uh, I guess Bruce Bruce Lee's character. Um, I can't remember his name, but it's Bruce Lee, basically. He's the character he's playing. He's at a... I would think it's some kind of... Not a... That's not a... How can I put this? It's, I think it's like a Shaolin temple. So I think he's... So I think Bruce is kind of like playing a Shaolin monk. Kind of, but he's like a martial artist. Something like that. So he's at a Shaolin temple. And... There's a, there's a, the guy he's, he's talking to like his leader, who's a Shaolin priest, and he's also a martial artist kind of deal. And uh, there's some scenes where the main scene that, one of the main iconic scenes in that first uh, scene is when Bruce is kind of coaching a boy, kind of a young teenage boy. Probably at 14 or so. Well, that ballpark. Maybe 12 to 14. More, more 14. And uh, he's his voice is already lowered, so he's, he's a young young teenager boy kind of thing. So he has him, like, you know, kick, he says, kick me, you know. So he's not able to hit him, of course. And so he's trying to coach the boy in, in how to fight, but how to fight more effectively you need emotional content, but not 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 feel angry, all that stuff. That's that's an iconic moment, but for me, it's it's more kind of like um, I keep wondering why did he smack him on the forehead? You know, like oh, yeah, hopefully he didn't hit him too hard, <laughs> and all this stuff. So it's 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 very green, it's very lush uh, environment. So that, that stuck with me a little bit, but. A lot of folks seem to seem to remember that that scene quite a bit, and he's meeting meeting with Mister Braithwaite and having tea and stuff while they talk about some introductory stuff before he talks to Mister Braithwaite about what he what he wants him to do. This is the main mission of the whole movie, which I won't get into detail about this because it, it would ruin the. I don't. I want you guys to see this for yourself. Um, but anyway, so there's the meeting. I won't say what it's about. You have to watch the movie. <laughs> So there's no, there's no spoilers in, no spoilers in this in this video. Um, the next scene that for me is kind of stuck in my subconscious is kind of when you see, um, I guess, the slums of Hong Kong, or you see a lot of river boats, and or, I mean, you see a lot of just poor people that are living on boats and things. And this is Bruce is seeing all this stuff as he's going to this island they're all going to this island for a martial arts kind of thing which again i don't want to say too much about this because it would ruin the plot 
And there's other characters, you know, that, that notice the same stuff. Um, and this movie, Another Dragon, they really, on purpose, wanted to have people from every different, uh, well, the main, I guess you say, well, not, not all races, not all groups of people, but at least, um, at least, uh, you know, white, white folks. I think it was John Saxon played his character, uh, was kind of representing Europeans. And then a black folks uh, with, um... oh, anyway, I know his name. <laughs> anyway, he's kind of a taller guy, kind of had the afro, uh, that gentleman. Um, played, kind of represented black folks. And then, of course, Bruce Lee, it was a whole bunch of Asian folks, <laughs> of course. There, there may have, I think those, was the, so it's been the white, black, Asian. But I don't think they had any Hispanic or they didn't have any Indian or they didn't, anyway. I know. So anyway, um, let me see here. So again, I remember the Hong Kong slums, and that and that was kind of tough to see that stuff, of course. Um, yeah, you just want to help poor people, people that aren't as well off as much as possible. So then, there's a scene inside of a palace that is. I want to talk about this for a bit. Um, it, it, red and gold are very popular uh, colors in China. Red, I know, is a is a kind of represents having uh, it's a symbol of good luck, so it's a, a very positive color. Um, in the West, so, so China, it's more like, oh, this is a really awesome color. It will bring you good luck. Uh, in the West and Europe, red is seen more like. Um, which I'm sure it's, you know, you see that somewhat in Japan. Or they can see that aspect of red, but it, red is seen as more like a, a violent color, or it's a color of desire, passion, you know, strong feelings, that sort of thing. So sometimes viewed negatively, you know, that way. But. And then gold, of course, gold um, being um, kind of extravagant and stuff. So, um, So, it's showing all these people eating. It's a big feast. And there's roast pig and with apples stuck in the pig's mouth. And there's all these animals, exotic animals in cages for some reason. All these dancers and things. And all this, this music going on. And you see kind of like Bruce Lee's hardly eating. eating. He's not hardly eating anything. He just has like a... Something like a chocolate-covered nut or something. Or some kind of date or I don't know whatever it was it looked like a nut or something like that it was just one little nut thing or I don't know and then it was um they are just talking and, and then there's a kind of introductory kind of thing a speech and people went back to what they're doing and the next scene I remember that's kind of really iconic is um There's there's kind of a scene where Bruce Lee's sneaking around trying to get information about what's going on. But again, I don't want to say too much about the plot. But um, so it's kind of scenic in terms of the the um, the way the rooms are. There's a lot of Chinese faces and stuff and artwork and stuff. And um, that's pretty cool. And it's kind of sneaky, mysterious, and at night and stuff. And then um, the, there's always, the, the for me, like the, the uh, when everyone's working out, like the warm-ups in the morning and stuff. That doesn't really stuck around with me, but there's another scene I forgot to mention that has to do with um, a more a... I shouldn't mention too much about the scene, but it's kind of a... Um, yeah, I should just look. It, but it, but it's 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 a it's a fight scene or it's a it's an intense scene with a woman who's trying to get away from some guys pursuing her. Um, I think it may have been an attempted rape, but she, she killed herself before they could do anything, or it could have been because of some other reason. I can't remember exactly, but um, I think I can mention this safely without giving away the plot. Uh, this woman that 
that committed suicide was Bruce Lee's sister in this movie. Not not real life sister, just in the movie's sister. So there's a little bit of payback going on here. But there's other things going on which I won't say. Um, so and I think they show that scene I think it's at the beginning of the movie. Anyway, where she's running away from these guys. Um, so you have all these workout scenes and you have all this other stuff going on. And eventually, I think they get to the fighting, the actual tournament. Um, and this is where everybody talk, everybody, everybody talks about this, um, this stuff. Um, it's probably the most talked about thing in Enter the Dragon, all the fights. I don't really want to mention anything too much about this stuff because I'm sure there's some things that are extremely iconic. Um, and meanwhile, there's also other things aside from the, the fighting scenes where you see, um... I don't know. Again, I don't want to mention it because it, it spoiled the movie, but there's a lot of other places in this big, for, big, huge fortress palace that they're in. Um, and one place in particular is kind of like where the, the person in charge of the tournament and owns the palace. Uh, his name is Han. He has um, all these interesting things like a claw and he's got uh, all his yeah these things in cages that are kind of like um almost like, looks like a museum or exhibit or something like that so it's very very different that way it's <laughs> but yeah that's those scenes have stuck with me and um other things like um the there's kind of a question of would somebody be willing to kill, uh, but I won't say what that scene refers to. But there's kind of the question of um, is someone are, are you or is anyone capable? What does it take to be capable of killing somebody? And it's a very interesting question because there's a moral side to it. Like you don't want to, you should not, thou shalt not kill. But then um, there are times when maybe you should kill. There's always a question of when should you kill. Um, we always struggle with that. There's always questions about you know capital punishment or whatever. Um, but uh, anyway, going on to some other stuff. Um, so there's a scene that's kind of crazy with regard to um, um, a fight, but it's kind of. Um, well, it makes you feel like the, the guy who's, is getting, in, he's getting beat up. He's kind of at, the, he's kind of, um, he's, he's, at, the tough thing is, is that he has, um, he's not able to see the other guy's deceptions and, um, so the good guy ends up dying. Right, again, I'm trying to keep this very uh, no spoiler kind of thing. When when you have things like drugs that affect your mind, and um, you're not familiar with the layout of a place, um, you can be very vulnerable to getting hurt. I've, I've always that's one of the things that always you know stuck around with me is. is um, that whole idea. Um, now there's a of course um, toward the end of the movie there's let me see here I'm trying to remember how this the, the big big fight broke out but I think it has something to do with Bruce Lee um, finally confronts um, the, the main bad guy. And they have a huge fight. And it, it, it kind of breaks out to everybody else. When um, they... Um, 
and get outside the palace. So, um, because the people loyal to the bad guy are fighting the uh, all the other people that aren't loyal, and it's, it's always it's it's like um, and there's kind of a, that's right. There's all also this scene where where Bruce is trying to. Um, He's in these tunnels and things. He's trying to, um, well, again, I don't want to spoil anything for you. So that's, but, but yeah, I can see that there's a few things that have stuck in my mind. The, 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 the big ones being that big banquet room that's very red and gold. And then also the Chinese slums. And also um, in, in Hong Kong. And also, um, in addition to those two scenes, Probably some of the just ways that different rooms in the palace, what they kind of how they kind of felt. Um, now there's a few other things I wanted to talk about with another dragon, perhaps. Um, well, so there's the question of what would what um, how much strength does it take to kill? When is it okay to kill? That's that's question the movie asked you can still keep asking that question over and over again you know it's hard it's a hard one and then also um there there's a suggestion that eat, overeating is not good for you physically or that it will make you fat you know that sort of thing and you need to watch how much you eat uh, then um there's also other things like you know the movie talks about other human appetites and things um as well um i just asked questions like um is is this a, a good way of living or is this not so good so yeah i mean it explores a little bit of sexual subject st stuff but nothing too in depth and it also gets into drugs and gets into, um, of course, it talks about gluttony. I was hinted at with the with the fat guys are eating a whole bunch of stuff, or they're chubby, or whatever, or the whole idea of the banquet just being full of amazing foods and stuff. Um, and then there's the question of uh, when everybody's warming up, also in the morning, doing their normal warm ups for the tournament or whatever for the place. Um, do you just go along? always blindly in in what you're supposed to be doing or because Bruce is kind of like um, not outside with everybody else. He is warming up, but he's not warming up around everybody else. So is, is there ever a time when you can march the beat of your own drummer? And if, you, if so, what's okay to do? And, you know, or, or when, when, when is, when is the, the routine not something necessarily that you have to do? Um, kind of thing. And then there's also the question of um, I guess in general women can be a distraction or they can be it's associated with sex I suppose but women can be a distraction or they can be a friend or ally every woman's different you know you want to be aware of character of women if you're a guy that sort of thing it touches on that as well um also there's um a bit this is one of the deep the deeper things there are some things that involving martial arts more directly i suppose but it's it's um um there, there's a question of character in general um what causes somebody to behave disgracefully? Um, or what is, in general, what is immoral behavior? Um, what would cause a Shaolin monk to hang his head in, in uh, shame at one of his people that he trained acting poorly? Um... And then, by the same token, aside from the show along, it would be anybody who is more of a spiritual leader, that sort of thing. 
Uh, what would cause them to have, hang their heads in shame at the actions of somebody? So, you know, and also, of course, poverty. Um, how can we help people to, to out of the, get out of the slums? Or, um, you know, are some people always going to be in slums? Um, and what does it take, you know, to get out of? And it could be that not necessarily just a financial thing. It could be just life. Someone might feel they're in, in slums. And what does, it, what does it take to get them out of that way of feeling and being? And then... Um, I forgot to mention that there's some other things that happen on the boat ride over to this fortress that are kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. One of, and it has to do with this idea of, of mind games, which a lot of guys in the military kind of are subjected to. <laughs> but this is fun. It's fun how how Bruce kind of uses mind games on different kinds of people that want to kind of um, see how tough he is. And I, I won't spoil it again. I won't spoil it for you. But there's a lot of funny scenes, and and Bruce's character is you know a really good guy. So he's, um, anyway, it's 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 funny. Um, but I wanted to mention all this stuff because there's there's many there's many of these scenes, quite a few, quite quite a number of them. Um, and I think Bruce wanted it that way. He wanted a really big, nice, awesome movie. Had lots of martial arts and had lots of other stuff too. A lot of themes. There's something else I forgot to mention too. One of the most iconic scenes um, having to do with, the, with the, an area where there's a final battle. Uh, one of the rooms that Bruce goes into has a whole bunch of mirrors. And the, you know, this is mirrors are one of the big, big things that we tend to kind of have in our subconscious that we have feelings about. Mirrors. Um, are so interesting. They sometimes seen as a doorway into the supernatural or the spiritual, whatever. Um, or we, we wonder what's what's behind the mirror, and we can only see ourselves. Reflection. Okay. You know. Mirrors. Uh, so they can hide things behind them. They can be a form of deception. Um. They but they show things as they really are you know it's it's interesting because you know you look up mirrors online whether in dreams or or whatever and there's a lot of stuff going on there but um what if there are multiple mirrors and, and the thing about this scene is that it kind of causes visually causes bruce to kind of not be sure where the bad guy is because all these multiple mirrors are kind of reflecting off of uh, a lot of different directions. So um, Bruce can very easily get disoriented about where the bad guy is coming from. If he's not careful. So uh, anyway, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, catch you guys. Oh, catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.